Another particularly simple type of motion that allows us to explore some things that we couldn't do before is called uniform circular motion. So the definition of uniform circular motion is that we have motion on a circular path at constant speed. Um, and so a lot of things do exhibit um, circular motion. So for instance, motors or wheels um, or like theme park attractions, uh, you know, uniform circular motion is applicable to those. But even for things that are not actually uniform circular motion, the study that we're doing here will allow us to consider relatively small turning motions um, using the same tools. Okay, so one of the reasons this is nice is because it is an inherently two-dimensional um, motion. So many of the things we've looked at so far have been one dimensional, or we've treated it as one dimensional, um, maybe in two different pieces, like with projectile motion. But in the case of uniform circular motion, it's pretty inherently two dimensional. Um, another thing that's kind of interesting is the acceleration is constantly changing. Um, and so in the case of projectile motion, for instance, um, even though it was two dimensional motion, the acceleration was constant, which made it relatively easy. Okay, so let me just start by sketching a picture of an object undergoing circular motion. Okay, so here's the circular path it's following. And at one point, the velocity um, may be in this direction, tangent to the circular path. And then at another point, the velocity may be like this. Okay, same speed, but a different direction. Okay, so what we want to do to think about the acceleration in this case is we need to figure out what the delta V is. Because remember, the acceleration, at least the average acceleration, is delta V over delta T. Okay, so um, to find delta V, remember that V1 plus whatever this change in velocity vector is, is going to give us V2. Okay, so if I sketch my two vectors, V1 looks like this. And if I bring V2 over, V2 looks like this. So to get from V1 to V2 using pirate map rules, I imagine I'm walking along V1 and I want to get back over to V2, then this is what my delta V vector looks like. So we can see that V1 plus um, delta V leads us to where we ended up with, with V2. And so delta V is in the direction of the acceleration. And so in between these two points in time, the average acceleration is going to be in this direction. Okay, so notice that the acceleration is towards the center of the circle. Okay, and that's going to be true anytime for uniform circular motion. If I picked two different points um, to calculate the velocities and the delta Vs, halfway in between those points, we would still get an acceleration that was towards the center. So acceleration this way, um, over here it'd be this way, over here this way. So um, apparently constant magnitude, uh, but the direction is always changing. Okay, so let's try to figure out what is that magnitude. Now there are a variety of different ways that we can go about this, but I'm going to use calculus um, to figure out what is the acceleration. So um, what I'm going to do is um, write the coordinates x and y in terms of the angle. Okay, because this is a circle, we can use information that you learned about the unit circle from trigonometry to write the positions. So for instance, I can write x as the radius of the circle times cosine of the angle, and y as the radius of the circle times the sine of theta. Okay, so um, it should be familiar that that gives you a circle if you plot that for many values of theta. Okay, but we want to think about what's happening in terms of time. Well, we can use the fact that the theta is changing uniformly um, in order to figure out how to write x and y in terms of time. Okay, so um, to figure out the arc length, we use um, radians. So theta is going to be the distance traveled along the circle divided by the radius of that circle. And the distance is just going to be the speed times the time. So I'm going to plug that in for theta in my two equations. So x is going to be r times cosine of vt over r, and y is going to be r times sine of vt over r. Okay, so now I have explicit equations for x and y, which means that I have explicit equations for the velocities by taking the derivative of these. So um, the velocity in the x direction is dx by dt, or a notation that physicists often like is um, we do a dot over the x to indicate a time derivative. So in calculus, you probably saw primes for derivatives. Um, if you're doing time derivatives specifically in physics, we like to denote that with a dot. Okay, so x dot is just going to be the derivative of x. Well, r is a constant. Derivative of cosine is negative sine of vt over r. But then we have to do the chain rule because um, the argument of cosine is itself a function of t. So the derivative of vt over r is just going to be v over r, um, where again, that's from the chain rule. Okay, and so vy, which is denoted y dot, because it's the time derivative of y, um, we do the same thing. So r times the derivative of sine is just cosine of vt over r. And again, from the chain rule, we get a v over r. Okay, well, um, we then can find the accelerations. Ax will be x double dot. Um, the derivative of sine is cosine. So we've got now r times negative cosine of vt over r. Um, and then from the chain rule, we get another v over r, so v over r squared. 
Okay, and then a y is y double dot, which is going to be r. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, so negative sine of vt over r, v over r, all squared. Okay, so one thing that um, is useful to notice at this point is if we look at our expression for x up here, we have something extremely similar to that in the expression for a. Um, and if we look at the expression for y, we have an expression for um, an expression very similar to that in there as well, just with a minus sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make those replacements. Um, I'm going to take the um, ax is going to be negative x times uh, v squared over r squared. A y is going to be negative y v squared over r squared. And again, all I've done is replaced the negative uh, or the green things with x and y, um, and there's that negative sign that's left over. Okay, so we're getting really close now. So if I want to find the total acceleration, then um, that's just going to be square root of ax squared plus ay squared, which we have expressions for now. That's going to be negative x v squared over r squared squared um, plus negative y v squared over r squared squared. And um, the v squared and r squared are going to be the same. So I'll get v squared over r squared out front, um, square root of x squared plus y squared. And that's just r. So the radius of the circle is x squared plus y squared at any given point. And so we're going to get v squared over r. That's the expression for the acceleration of an object undergoing uniform circular motion. Um, and also looking back at the expressions we had for the two components, we can see that ax um, depends on x and ay depends on y. So this also shows, although it's not as obvious if you haven't done a, a ton of higher level math, that um, the direction is also going to be directly back towards the center. So this also um, confirms what we thought before, that the direction is toward the center. Okay, so um, altogether then, we have the following piece of information. For circular motion, a sub c, the, the circular acceleration, has a magnitude that's v squared over r. This is a big one. We're going to use this um, all the time, including in 122 and 123. Lots of um, important things in those courses uh, use circular motion. And so this formula will keep coming back, for instance, in astronomy, um, thinking about particles and magnetic fields, um, thinking about um, artificial gravity type things. Um, this comes up all the time. And then the direction is that it, the acceleration is toward the center of the circle. Okay, so that's also important. Um, there are a couple of terms that are associated with uniform circular motion that I want to mention. So one is centripetal. Um, and centripetal is just a fancy way of saying that it is um, relating to circular motion. Okay, so people will often talk about centripetal acceleration, and that's what the A sub C stands for. So the formula for centripetal acceleration is just V squared over R. Sometimes people will also use centripetal force. So we still have the um, Newton's second law, which says the net force on an object is its mass times acceleration. If it is undergoing circular acceleration, Um, so if A is um, centripetal acceleration, then the net force is sometimes called a centripetal force. But please do not be confused. The centripetal force is not a new type of force. It's just a label that we give to one of the familiar kinds. So if you tie a string to an object and swing the object in a circle, um, the centripetal force is just the tension from the string. If you consider the Earth going around the sun in a circular path, the centripetal force is just gravity. If you consider a car driving in a circle, the centripetal force is just the friction that keeps it from um, sliding off into some other direction. So centripetal forces are never a new type of force. Um, free body diagrams will never have a force that is labeled as a centripetal type because there is no such thing. It's just a way that we label the other forces. Um, another term that comes up is centrifugal. Um, so a centrifugal force um, is not real. Um, and for this course, you should not ever even really think about what a centrifugal force um, might mean. But in real life, um, the centrifugal force is the sensation that you get when you're, say, turning in a car that you feel like you're flung towards the outside of the car. But there isn't actually a force that's there um, that is only due to our perception because we're in a reference frame that is moving. So um, you'll hear that sometimes. Don't worry about centrifugal forces. They're not an actual force. Um, there are some cases uh, where if you were, say, living on a spinning space station, it might make sense to consider centrifugal forces. But for our purposes, you can uh, pretend that they aren't, um, aren't a consideration at all.